without crying is the presence of the Lord, which is so strong as well. I feel his presence here. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I'm going to start with um, a reading verse out of Isaiah. So if everybody wants to stand for the reading of the word. Isaiah 43, verses 10 through 12. It says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will, the, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. So one of the verses that I really uh, focused on out of those was that the Lord states, I have revealed, saved, and proclaimed. And as I began to work on this sermon, and I shared with the ladies this morning that, that this, this time was a little challenging, but God, it was just more challenging than the times before. But as I began to work on this sermon, God reminded me of Paul, his servant, and his testimony. And Paul was on a particular path in his life. You can go ahead and be seated if you like. Paul was on a particular path in life when God revealed himself to him. God revealed himself to Paul on the road to Damascus. Yeah, he was on the road, but he was on a particular path in his life, spiritually. Because Paul was, cru was crucifying Christians. But the thing that really got me thinking was the path that I was on when God, in his great mercy and his love, he extended grace to me, and what path you were on when God came to you and extended his mercy and his grace. I just, that just overwhelms me just to think about it. Because that is such a great love, it's an extravagant love. Or you may be on a path today right now in this moment, and God is revealing himself to you now, today. And I don't know about you, but is there any other God that comes to where you are at? He comes to you. And offers this, he offers such a great gift. I mean, we were lost. There's no other God that comes to you and offers you a gift of salvation. Amen. And it says it in Isaiah 43.10. He says, Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You see, God knows his creation. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He saw Paul, who was named Saul at the time. But he looks on the inside. He looks on the inside of us. And he saw what Paul was going to become through his divine intervention, his divine purposes for Paul. Yes. And it's the same for me and it's the same for you. As we are walking along our path in sin, headed for eternal death. 
God had his eye on us. And he said, no, wait a minute. That's my child. And I'm going to reveal myself to that, that person. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is God the revealer. God the revealer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you and I praise you. Father God, I ask right now that you would just move me out of the way, Father God. Father, I thank you that you have anointed me and appointed me, Father God. And I thank you for the word that you've put in me, Father God. Help me to share it, Father, as you have given it to me. Help me to reveal it as you have revealed it to me, Father God. I pray that every, he every ear would hear, Father God what you have to say today and have understanding and may it take root in their heart, Father God, and flourish, Father. And I thank you and I praise you. In Yeshua's name, amen. I don't have a Bible up here. I have my phone because I am going to be kind of reading verses out of three different ver versions, the, uh, the Holman's, the NIV, and the New King James. So it's easier to, to do that on the phone than it is to have three Bibles up here. <laughs> so. Amen. Um, but I did have three Bibles in my study room, so that... <laughs> so I'm going to start with the meaning of reveal. Reveal means to make known through divine inspiration, to open up to a new view, display. And, and as, as we're going through the sermon today, there's some key things to keep in mind. There is purpose to what, when, where, how, and why God reveals. His reveal prompts a response. And the first thing I want to talk about today is that God reveals himself as creator. Now before I get started, I just want to say is that when you look up the word reveal in the Bible search, it is so overwhelming. There is so much because there's words that are synonymous to that, which is like make known, disclose, there's uh, manifest. There's so many things that are similar to that. So there is an abundance of scripture that, that demonstrates God revealing. But in Genesis chapter 1, we're not going to read that whole chapter, but in Genesis chapter 1, and in many more scriptures that you, that you can find, God reveals himself as creator of heaven and earth and all of life. All of life. In Psalm 19.1, it states that his mighty works are on display. And I'm going to read Romans chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Okay. She's got it up there, so I'm going to be easier. Since what, God may be, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. His handiwork is on display everywhere you go. We cannot deny that there is a, a, a God that created this earth heaven and earth and everything in it. Amen. Amen. God reveals himself as the one true living God. Jeremiah 10.10 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal King. He demonstrated this by his glory. If you, if you, um, and not every scripture will be up there. 
He demonstrates this by his glory. In Exodus 40, 34, it talks about how the glory filled the temple of the Lord. There are so many scriptures on glory. I was just overwhelmed with, with I mean, it's, it's very overwhelming with how God speaks to you. He is also known as the King of Glory. I'm sure there's many others that you can think of. God also revealed, uh, demonstrates this by His power. I want to read Psalm 65, verse 6. Thank you, Nicole, for having all the scriptures. You established the mountains by your power, robed with strength. And Exodus 15, 6 also speaks of the Lord's glorious power. The next one is righteousness. In Psalm 11, 7, it states the Lord is righteous. In Psalm 89, 14, Scripture says, righteousness and justice are found, or, or the foundation of his throne. In Romans 3, verse 21, you have that there? But now apart from the law, God's righteousness has been revealed, attested by the law and the prophets. That is God's righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe since there is no distinction. Can you go to 25A? Okay. God presented him as a propitiation through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness. And we're going to skip down to 26. He presented him to demonstrate God presented Jesus to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be righteous and declare righteous the one who has faith in Jesus. There is no God apart from him. There is no God that saves. Only false gods, which were prevalent then and now. God was demonstrating revealing himself as the one true living God. Amen. And just as they, those false gods were prevalent then, they are still here today. False God, false religion. But God is continuously revealing himself as the one true living God. Amen? Amen. God reveals himself as Redeemer, Savior. In Isaiah 47, 4, the Holy One of Israel is our Redeemer. The Lord of hosts is his name. Hallelujah. And just like you know, when you brought the sermon, it's like you, you work. It's like this goes so fast. You spend hours doing it, and it's like it goes so fast when you're up here. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's like I have five pages of notes. I'm on, I'm on like the third page now. I'm going to slow down. God just revealed that to me. I need to slow down. God reveals himself as Redeemer and Savior. In Isaiah 47, 4, I just read that, I'm sorry. Scripture speaks also of God's holy arm. And I just found this very interesting. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has the arm of the Lord been revealed to? Isaiah 52, verses 9 through 10. The Lord displays his holy arm. All will see the salvation of our God. Amen. So did you ever know that God has a holy arm? Well, we know, we know he is holy, but I've just never seen a distinction with the holy arm. And salvation is through his son, Jesus, through Yeshua. So I want to read 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second 
Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. God extends his arm of salvation so that none should perish, so that all should be saved. That is, that is God's plan, that all should be saved, that none should perish. And he didn't want you to perish when he found you on the path that you were on. I still just think that's so amazing that a God comes to you where you're at. <clears throat> Number four, God reveals himself as deliverer. You know, as I was preparing this sermon, you know how many times I heard the reveal, the word reveal out of my studies? I heard it throughout. I knew God was confirming that, that, that he was speaking. But God reveals himself as deliverer. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and I will rescue you, you declares the Lord. I think in, the, in, in uh, the New King James Version, it says, I will uh, deliver you. But we also find in Daniel chapter 6 that he rescues, he delivers, he works signs and wonders. In Psalms 144, verse 2, He subdues. He is my loving God, my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. Amen. He also makes known the enemy's plot, and he gives us strategy. You know, as I was, I was looking at these scriptures, I, I was thinking all about the studies in the Old Testament. And um, it's just full of examples of how God delivered his people. How he has redeemed and delivers his people. Because he doesn't want us to be in bondage. He does not want us to be enslaved again. He died to give us freedom. Freedom, amen. But but the Old Testament, I mean, if, if you study the Old Testament, I mean, when when David was in trouble, when he was threatened, I mean, he went to the Lord. God gave him strategy on what to do. He delivered his people out of Egypt. I mean, there's just there's just testimony after testimony. And that's what God does for us in our life. Think about the many times that he has delivered you. I think about the many times that he has delivered me. And I praise him for that. But I want to read 2 Timothy 4.18. Do you have that, Nicole? It says the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. He will deliver you from yes. every evil attack. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 And, and the enemy is, is escalated these days. But hallelujah, there is a God that delivers us from every evil attack. Yeah. Amen. Ah, that just stirs me up inside. It does. Amen. And doing this sermon just really stirred my spirit. Hallelujah. God 
reveals the path of life. In Acts chapter 2, verse 28, he says, he states, you have revealed the path of life to me. This is by revelation of his word. Jeremiah 18, 2. God says, I will reveal my words to you. <clears throat> he reveals the path of life by his words and thoughts in Amos 4.13. God is the one who reveals his thoughts to man. God reveals his thoughts to us. This directs us on our path of life. Otherwise, we'd be kind of wandering around aimlessly. His plans, in some version, was in some versions it also says his counsel, his plan, his counsel. They use the two words the same. In Amos three seven, it says the Lord reveals his plan or counsel to his servants. But I want to read Acts 2, 22 and 23. Men of Israel, listen to these words. This Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a man pointed out to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs that you did not that God did among you through him, just as you yourselves know. Though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. But the part that really struck me out of that was that God's determined plan, his determined plan and purpose for you, for each and every one of us, just as in Christ, just as in the servants that you read about, Paul, John, um, they had a determined, God had a determined plan and purpose for each and every one of them. Yes. As he does for us. God reveals the, the path of life also by revealing mysteries and hidden things to us. And if you read in the chap uh, uh, Daniel chapter 2, it speaks all about mysteries and hidden things that uh, God used Daniel to interpret for the king. God also uses visions and dreams to direct us. He also uses new things. In Isaiah 42, 9, it says, I declare new events. I announce them to you before they occur. So we can be firm-footed. I mean, just as such, Sister Kim, the message last week was about um, checking your feet and uh, different uh, shoes. She kind of uses an analogy for your spiritual walk. But see, God wants us to keep strong on a walk. So he reveals things to us so that we can stay on that path and walk strong in him. So that we can walk as his children, as his disciples, and we can walk with his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, and the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. God reveals sin. And this is important. I mean, there's a lot of things that God reveals. I've only picked like eight things. Okay. But God reveals sin. He looks at the heart of a person. In Proverbs 27, 19, 
It says, as water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the person. I've never read that scripture before. I just... As water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the person, who you are. And in 1 Corinthians 4 5, it says that God brings to light the hidden things, the intentions of the heart. God knows your secrets. The secret things that you don't want anybody else to know. In Psalm 44, verses 20 and 21, if we had forgotten the name of our God and spread out our hands to a foreign God, wouldn't God have found this out since he knows the secret of the heart? You cannot hide from God. You cannot hide anything from God. Because he created you. He knows everything about you. And he saw you where you were and he said, that's my daughter. That's my son. I'm going to reveal myself to them. I want them to be saved. I want them to be walking as my child. Hallelujah. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget where you were when the Lord revealed himself to you. I think sometimes as we get along 10, 15, 20 years in serving the Lord, we, we almost forget where we came from. Where God picked us up out of. We were on the road to eternal death. We were on the road to eternal death. Yes. And he said, hey, wait a minute. I don't want you to die because I you're my child. I have purpose for you. I have a divine purpose for you. You know, when you, if you read the story of Paul, it seems so like, wow, you know, he blinded Paul and, you know, Paul couldn't see for so many days. But, you know, that's just what it took to reach Paul. It's different for everybody. But everybody has a story like Paul. You may have been drowning in uh, drugs or just a very simple life, a life apart from God. And His grace and His mercy. His grace and His mercy picks you up and turns you around. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no other God that does that. There is no other God that reveals Himself that way. you have in your heart. We should be like Job. In Job 13.23, who cried out to the Lord, he said, Reveal to me my transgression, my sin. Why did Job do that? Because Job knew that sin separates us from God. Sin separates us from God. Even Amen. if you are saved and you've, you've backslidden or you've got some sin in your life, it separates you from God. Right. Your relationship is affected. It's hindered. Right. And he even says, I mean, Paul preached it, throw off those things that so easily beset you that hinder you. Those things affect your relationship with God. So we should be crying out with a heart like Job that says, God, reveal to me my sin so that we may be purified and cleansed, so that we will walk in purity and holiness. That's what God wants. Yes. 
And if we get to that place where we're walking in more purity and holiness, we'll be more effective ministers of the gospel. Because that sin that affects your relationship with God, it also affects your effectiveness as a minister for Christ. Number seven is that God is revealed in us. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 2.14. She's got it up there. But thanks be to God who always puts us on display in Christ and spreads to us in every place the scent of knowing him. Amen. So he puts us on display. He reveals Christ through us. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. But when God, who from my mother's womb set me apart and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I could preach him among the Gentiles. And this is Paul speaking. God is revealed in us also by his Holy Spirit at work in us. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who is working in you, enabling you both to will and act for his good purpose. Amen. It's his Spirit working in you. Yes. Hallelujah. God is also revealing us by his manifest power. It's not our power, it's his manifest power operating in us through giftings and ministry. Romans 9.17 states, for this very purpose, I, and this is, um, this is about Moses and Pharaoh when uh, God was raising up Moses. And he's telling them, for this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and my name be declared in all the earth. Yes. So it's not about you, it's about God revealing himself through you Amen. to reach a people, to reach a lost. Amen. Amen. You know, one thing I had to show, that I had to face when I was doing the sermon was that, um, Sometimes I can get stuck oh, into the performance be. because it's not a performance. This is a message that God gave me to speak out, to reveal that he wanted to reveal himself through me. And it's not about me. It's about him speaking to each and every one of us about how awesome he is, how mighty he is. A God that reveals himself to you over and over again at all times of your life. Because he doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to reach that goal. He wants you to finish well. John, 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 and 3. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have observed and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. That life was revealed and we have seen it and we testify and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. Who's the life that he's speaking of? Jesus. God revealed his son to us. And we are to reveal God to others. It says we, we have seen, we speak, we declare what we have seen, what we have heard. We declare to others our testimony, what God has done for us, how he saved us. We are, we are to testify about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. 
God is the revealer in our past, our present, and our future. When he gave me those three words, I was like, I don't know how that's going to fit. But, you know, I couldn't get it in here. Um, but God gave me, gave me those three terms. He, the revealer in our past, present, and future. He's God throughout the ages and the age to come. He has re been revealing himself from the beginning of time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. My people hear my instruction. Listen to what I say. I will declare wise sayings. I will speak mysteries from the past. Things we have heard and known and that our fathers have passed down to us. We must not hide them from the children, but must tell a future generation the praises of the Lord, his might, and the wonderful works he has performed. He established a testimony in Jacob. He established a testimony in, put your name right there, and set up a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers to teach their children so that a future generation, children yet to be born, might know they were to rise and tell their children so that they might put their confidence in Yahweh and not forget Yahweh's works but keep his commandments. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the revealer in our past and in our present. He continues to reveal himself. In John 14, verses 19 through 21, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He says, in a little while, the world will see me no more see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Did you get that? Yes. The one who has kept, the one who has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, I also will love him and will reveal myself to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We have a hope and a glory right now, but we have a future hope and a glory. In Isaiah 40, verse 5, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh, all nations, I added all nations, all flesh, because it is all flesh, shall see it. He ha he, the glory of the Lord has been revealed to us through ages. But there's a coming glory of the Lord that's going to be revealed. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. In Romans 8, 18 through 19. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time that we're in, they're not worth comparing to the glory, the glory that is going to be revealed in us. Yes. Yes. For the creation eagerly awaits with anticipation for God's sons and daughters to be revealed. Yes. And when the, you know the word the, the word sons is, is meaning all mankind. I just like to throw in daughters. <laughs> but hallelujah, we have a future hope and glory that is expounded on top of the hope and glory that we have right now in Christ Jesus. In Colossians two, uh, Colossians three verses two through four. God tells us to set our minds on what is above and not what is on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with the Messiah in God. When the Messiah who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him 
in glory. Amen? Yes. This is going to be a glory that we've never known. Hallelujah. But he is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is the same. And I didn't really have a conclusion. I got stuck there because I said, God, Sometimes, sometimes you just can't write it down. But just as we've been speaking today, how God has revealed himself, how that is such a great love, a mighty love, an extravagant love in the ways that he reveals himself. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. Lord, I just thank you for your word today. I thank you for who you are. I thank you, Father, for how you have revealed yourself to us, Father. And how you continue to reveal yourself. You enable us to continue walking as your disciples, as your children, Father God. And I thank you for that future hope and glory that we have to be revealed with Christ at the appearing of Christ. I just thank you, Father God. I thank you that you have provided an eternal life for those who believe. And I pray for each and every one here today, Father God. Lord, that you minister to them today, Father. Whatever their need is, Father God. Whatever you have revealed to them, Father God. I pray that they do not walk out here the same, Father God. That they are changed by you, Father. I pray that they have accepted you as Lord and Savior. I pray, Father, if they have anything, Father God, that is affecting their relationship with you, Father God, that they would give that to you. Reveal it to them and, give, and that they would give that to you, Father, and they may be reconciled to you today completely. We praise your name, Father. Amen.